looking for a change of scene and you were looking at a magazine that was red carpets and limousines and the grass seemed so much greener all we wanted was to get there fast so we backed up everything we had Couldn't wait to leave that life behind. Trying to find salvation in the same side. One of those early nights when the stars come out. Oh, the stars come out and shine. And they burn so bright. Hey there, friends. How's it going? This is David Potts with Song Notes, and today we're looking at Chris Stapleton's song, When the Stars Come Out. This is my favorite of all his songs, so I really can't wait to teach it to you. I'm going to be doing no capo, right? He has capo third fret when he plays this, but with this no capo version, you're still going to use regular chords, right? Key of G stuff here, but you can still play over Chris Stapleton's version, which is good stuff, okay? For the intro, I'll show you how he does it, but I'll also show you a simplified version. We're going to be on the thinnest three strings. It's way easier to play, in my opinion, so I'm excited that I finally worked that out, and I'm going to share it with you. For strumming patterns, I have a few options, as per usual. So let's get into it. I do have a drumming track available to play over, as well as a sort of video play along along with just the chords on screen, you know, no singing, none of that. That way you can practice your soloing, you can practice your strumming, practice the intro. It's a great little practice track. That's all available at my website, songnotes.net. I also have a full play along cover. If you just want to watch me play the song from beginning to end, see how it really sounds when I uh, put this arrangement together for you. So let's get into it. Um, I'll see you on the other side, friends. If you're looking for more Chris Stapleton after this one, I have many more of his lessons over on my site. So check that out, songnotes.net. I'm almost at lesson 500. Thanks to all of you who are supporting me over there. It's really appreciate it. So onward we go. Let's learn this song and I'll see you on the other side. Okay, so the intro to this song. Uh, let's look a really quickly at how Chris Stapleton does it, then I'll show you the simpler version, and you'll see how much simpler it is and easier to play, right? Now, Chris Stapleton's using sort of this voicing of a G. It's on frets 10 and 12. You don't really need to learn it necessarily, but just know that the, the crux of it is on frets 12, 12, 12, on the fourth, third, and second string. Then the F is the same pattern, it's just everything is two frets uh, lower, right? So 10, 10, 10. Now for the C, he's going down to 5-5-5. Five, five, five. Okay, same thing where we're just sort of adding on the second string, we're going one fret higher than whatever we're barring, right? Now for the G, we're just gonna play this sort of triad right here, also on strings four, three, and two. Okay, this is frets five, four, and three. And then using our pinky on the third string from fourth to fifth fret, we get this sort of melody. So the highlighted notes here represent the melody, right? The part you would hum. Okay, now that's how Chris Stapleton is doing it in very broad strokes. He is technically using different fingers. He's barring with his ring finger, I believe, using his pinky. I can't do any of that, right? And even if you do the index finger bar that I was just showing you, you can pull it off but it's not as comfortable and it's harder to kind of get clean tones in my opinion. So here's how I like to play it. We're gonna move the same notes to the thinnest three strings. So it's gonna sound basically identical, it's just gonna be way easier to play, right? So for the G, we're gonna use 787. And just think of this as a D major chord, right? Same exact fingers you would use for D major, it's just on fret 787 instead of frets two, three, two, okay? You just repeat that thinnest string and then you're gonna add your pinky on the eighth fret, take it off, and then play the second string, right? Same thing for the F, just everything is two frets lower, right? So five, six, five. Okay, 
And then for the C, what we're gonna do, it's kind of the same pattern. We're just gonna go down to frets, to, to the open uh, third string, open first string, and then first fret on the second string. Uh, as far as the guitar is concerned, this is like the same pattern. It's just down like here. It's almost like our index and middle run out of frets. So we just play the open strings, right? The important part here is you wanna get a clean uh, sound. Right, you can use, I have middle ring right here, you could use index and middle. Okay, however it works for you. Then you're gonna go to a G major chord. And how I would do this is like play my ring finger here on the low E string, third fret, and then I mute the fifth string, right? Then all you're doing is strumming the thinnest five strings, and then you add your left index finger on the second string, first fret. Okay, so if we did it slow, it would sound like this. I'll do it one more time. Okay. That's basically how you, play the, how you play the intro. Now, a few tips here is you can effectively add filler notes from whatever triad shape you're playing. And what I mean by that is if 787 is our triad for the G major, right? We can sort of do. Okay, you can add those sort of loose drums. It just adds some, it fills things out a little bit, right? For that G, you might have saw me do this trick where I put down my left middle finger on the fourth string, second fret, and then my index finger where I taught you before, and we go back to a G. This is a sort of commonly called a G to a G sus or a G to a C over G, which is how I have it written up in my... Um, my song sheet here. You can use this throughout the song actually, okay? So no matter how you wanna play the intro, those are your two options. I don't like this way Chris Stapleton does it, like I said. It's just not as comfortable and I, I find that I can't get as clean of a sound, okay? But I included that in my song sheet as well. Just again, those highlighted notes represent the sort of implied melody. That's what you really wanna focus on. You can add additional filler, filler strums or filler grace notes. Just make sure those melody notes are shining through nice and true, okay? So that's what you need for the intro. Now let's look at the uh, verse, pre-chorus, and chorus for this song. Um, the great thing about this song is it uses these chord progressions, right? And it's really approachable to memorize this because it's only three different progressions not that many chords, and they're all kind of similar, right? Uh, so let's look at the intro and verse, just big picture, if we were to strum, right? We're gonna go from a G, two, three, four, to F, two, three, four, to C, two, three, four, to G, two, three, four, okay? Intro and verse both use this progression, and it's gonna repeat over and over again. Now, as far as chord shapes, really quick, okay? I have them written up in tab form, also in this sort of uh, fretboard diagram form in my song sheet here. Here's the deal. The G, you know, play it however you want. Uh, I like to do my ring finger on the low E string because it lets me do, it lets me add that fill at the end of each line of the verse, okay? And that sort of evokes what Chris Stapleton's doing. Now, for the F, you could play, the six string version of the F if you want to. But I would just use the middle four strings. That's what I actually do use. I never do the barring. The middle four strings is fine, right? Third, third, second, first. I'm sort of muting the thickest string and the thinnest string, just with my thumb and my index finger here. They're gonna kill the sound of those strings, right? It lets me get an F sound for a very low cost, which I'm a big fan of. I cover this in my beginner chord guide. If you need help with any of these chords, check out that course over on my website because I show you how to play them. Uh, chords to practice with each of these chords if you want to get some, um, you know, confidence under your belt and also ways you can modify them. So that's there for you. Uh, now we also need a C chord, okay? If we're coming from the F to the C, if we use that little voicing I showed you, that little cheat code voicing, it's really nice and easy to go to the C because our ring and index are already where they need to be. Okay, nice and easy switch there. Then we go back to the G. Now again, the intro and the verse use this progression. So if we did a strum on the one and the three count, which is a great way to sort of practice things, it would sound like this, right? Oh, one, two, 
three, four. I was looking for a change of scene. You were looking at a magazine. It was red carpets and limousines. And the grass seemed so much greener. Okay? G, two, three, four. F, two, three, four. C, two, three, four. G, two, three, four. Okay? Every verse uses that exact progression. So does the um, intro we played at the beginning there. But let's look at the pre chorus now. The pre chorus is going to keep our F and keep our C, but we're going to add an E minor, okay? A nice two finger chord and our A, a minor, okay? So it's just a four measure sequence here, right? So a one, two, ready, go. F, two, three, four, E minor, two, three, four, A minor, two, three, four, C, two, three. Four. Then we go to the chorus. If we sang that really quick, it would be uh, one, two, ready, go. We couldn't wait to leave that life behind. Trying to find salvation in that city limit sign. And one of those early nights. And we go into the chorus. Now the chorus is going to be exactly what we did in the verse, but we're just going to swap out the F and replace it with a D. So we're going from uh, one of those G nights to D, then back to C for one measure, then to G, then you repeat it, okay? One of those early nights when the stars come out, oh, the stars come out, they shine. It burns so bright, right? Then we go to D. I'm just repeating it here. Downtown lights, when the stars come out. Oh, when the stars come out. Okay? Those are all the chord progressions you need for the entire song. It's not that much to sort of bite off. And I mean, you can just sort of print this out, write this down on a note card, whatever, follow along with this, and then you can play the entire song, basically. Now, let's look at strumming, because strumming is really what gives this song a lot of its cool character here. Now, uh, I showed you that strumming on the one, two, and three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. That's how you would get started with things if you're just sort of taking your first steps. You want to get comfortable with the song structure and all that stuff. Now, as far as capturing Chris Stapleton's vibe, I'm going to show you three different strumming patterns, okay? And they're all kind of based on the same pulses, the same strong beats. What you can kind of hear in his version is this sort of... Uh, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Those are kind of where the pulses are going. I like to think of this as a three, three, two strum. You're going to hear this in a bunch of different songs, right? It's sort of breaking all the eighth notes into chunks of three and then three and then two. Okay. So, um, here, if you just did a down strum on those counts I have highlighted, here's what it would sound like, right? I was looking for a change of scene. You were looking at a magazine. It was red carpets and limousines. The grass seems so much greener. One and two and three and four and 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 okay. It might seem strange at first, but I recommend using the backing track I have over my website. Put that on. It's going to give you that steady drum beat, and then you can just practice strumming over this. And you can also play it over Chris Stapleton's version of the song. It'll sort of help you hear that strong beats that are in, that's in his version. Okay, so that's what I recommend uh, get, getting started with. Now, another way to approach this, this might be easier actually as a first step with this, is to take those same pulses and we're gonna add light down strums on all the beats in between, okay? So it's all down strums, but it's down, 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 down. See how the same beats have those pulses? One and two and three and four and... Let me sing the chorus for you. So, um, one of those early nights When the stars come out Oh, the stars come out And shine And it burns so bright They drown the downtown lights When the stars come out Oh, when the stars come out
okay? That's the next version. Now, the final and full version here, which is a great one to aspire to, is gonna be a down, up, down, down, up, down, 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 up, down, up, down, down, up, down, 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 up, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, down. Now, here's the thing. Technically, the same pulses, the same strong beats are happening just like I showed you in the previous two patterns, right? But we're gonna add in these light up strums plus the down strums on specific beats. Now, if you're more of a mathematical person, we're gonna use a 16th note sort of, uh, you know, counting notation here. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and four E and a... That might be unnecessarily complicated for you. I just wanna show you that if you broke things into 16 equal counts, right? That's what 16th notes are for each measure. We're gonna do our down strums on the one, a two, and three, e, and four, and a. But it might be easier for you to just simply do down, up, down, down, up, down, 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 up, down, up, down, down, up, down, 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 up, down, up, down, down, up, down, 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 up. Okay? That's the full strumming pattern. That's gonna sound the most satisfying, right? So that would sound like, uh, I'll do the pre-chorus and the chorus, right? We couldn't wait to leave that life behind Trying to find salvation that city limit sign In one of those early nights When the stars come out Oh, the stars come out In the shine And it burns so bright It drowns when the stars come out, oh, when the stars come out. Okay, so now that you have those three strumming patterns, tips on how to use them in the song. Uh, I think the verses benefit from being a bit more low key, right? So maybe use the first or the second strumming pattern I showed you. You might also want to use some just a palm mute, right? Keep your kind of hand near the saddle of the guitar. Then you could sort of do, right? I was looking for a change of scene. You were looking at a magazine. It was red carpets and limousines. The grass seems so much greener. And then I'm using the second strum pattern there. It's all down strums, but it's it's just the one and two and three and four and right where those those same three pulses get the things, but no up strums yet. Then maybe the pre-chorus, maybe I'll lighten up on the palm muting. So then it's gonna be we couldn't wait to leave that life behind. Trying to find salvation in that city limit sign. Okay, now right before the chorus, I'll just do all down strums and build it up one of those early nights when the stars come out. And then here I'm doing the full strum pattern, okay, where it's uh, full volume and it's the far, it's the most advanced version. That way you get a bit of dynamics, right? So use the palm mute to keep things a bit more subdued. Sort of take off the palm mute when you want to turn up the volume a little bit. And then on the chorus, go to that full strumming pattern and let it rip nice and loud, right? This, this song is all about that build up to the chorus. It's just going down on the roller coaster, wind blowing in your hair, beautiful stars out and all that stuff, okay? Now, one last tip is the vocal melody tab. If you're interested in singing this song and you need help finding the notes he's singing, I've written up the tab for the first uh, line of the verse, right? This will sort of get you started, right? And most of the song is using these same notes. Now, this is all coming from the G major pentatonic scale. And I recently did a lesson looking at the major pentatonic scales in open position. And for G, it's a great one to learn because it's all based around this existing chord shape you already know, right? You're just sort of lifting off fingers and adding fingers on the second fret usually. Okay, now those notes are great if you wanna add some flourish notes or some flair to your strummed chord, or you wanna add licks and fills, you can just pull from that bank of notes. Or if you're looking for vocal melodies for a song that's in the key of G like this one, 
Use that scale because in many cases, just like in this song, it's all coming from that scale, okay? Now the approximated tab looks like this. Now this is not capturing every little scoopy doopy nuance of Chris Stapleton's voice. So I'm not in that business, but basically, uh, I was looking for a change of scene. You were looking at a magazine. It was red carpets and limousines and the grass seemed so much greener. Okay, let me do it again. Okay, again, that's very, very broad strokes, but the rest of the song is gonna use that general cluster of notes. I think they will go as high as the, right? Every chorus starts like that. Open to third on the second string, and then open thinnest string. That's as high as you go, then it's all back down. Okay, so again, it's all G major pentatonic. Learn your scales because, your pentatonic scales especially, because it, it's helpful for figuring out melodies just like this. Now you have it all put together here. Uh, you have the intro, you have the chords, the strumming, and everything you need. Um, over on my website, I have a full beginning to end playthrough. I actually have a practice track. It's a video that shows the chord progressions and it sort of keeps track and it just repeats the uh, verse, pre-chorus, chorus a bunch of times. So you can strum over it, you can practice doing the melody notes, you could practice the intro, you could do whatever you want, but use that. It's a great visual aid over at songnotes.net. I have a drum track as well. If all you want is a drum beat to play over, I have that as a downloadable audio file. Um, but yeah, it's all there waiting for you, friends. So thanks for watching this one. I hope you found this helpful. This is one. This is my favorite Chris Stapleton song, without, without hesitation, I'll say. But if you're looking for more of his stuff, you know, I have Tennessee Whiskey, I have Millionaire, uh, Say Something. Uh, there's tons of songs that he's done that I'm a big fan of. And um, if you have any favorites that you'd like me to do a lesson on, send them in and um, I will definitely keep them in mind for the next Chris Stapleton lesson that I will inevitably get to at some point or another. So thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you in the next one. And until then, take care. Bye-bye.